Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Clayton Philpo and today we're going to be talking about why you can't touch your face at boot camp. Now I know that sounds weird, right? Why can't you touch your face at boot camp? You're going to go to boot camp and your drone instructor is going to come, they're going to yell at you every single time anybody lays a finger on their face. They're going to, you know, IT your entire platoon. They're going to chew your ass out right on the spot. And, you, and for the longest time, you're not going to understand why you can't touch your damn face. What is it about touching your face that's so bad? The menial things or seemingly menial things that happen at boot camp that you don't understand, but they actually serve a giant purpose. So we're going to go over a few of those things right now. So the, first, the, the most popular one is definitely uh, the touching of the face. Why can't you do it? And when I found out that it's because if you touch your face, you've got a 10 times better chance of spreading germs to it and gives you a 10 times better chance of you getting sick, which then gets the entire platoon sick, which then gets the drill instructor sick, and then all of a sudden uh, it's much harder tr to train. So they teach you to not touch your face in order to combat illnesses and sicknesses. So I thought that was really interesting. And for the longest time, I had no idea that that is why you couldn't touch your face. Now, when you go to boot camp, there's going to be a million things that happen and you're going to whisper under your breath, what the hell am I doing right now? Why do we have to do this? And of course, you can't ask the drill instructor, hey, wh why are we doing this, sir? Like, obviously, you're going to get throat punched if you do that. But there's a purpose to every single thing that they have you do at boot camp. Let's do another obvious one. Let's take the yelling, for example. Marine boot camp is infamous for the drill instructor's yell, the little frog voice they have, and the recruits screaming at the top of their lungs. You'll know people that come out of boot camp and they won't get their voice back for, you know, even a year later, some of them still have uh, really damaged vocal cords. In fact, I probably have damaged vocal cords, honestly. And the yelling serves a purpose too, because that's something that they're trying to replicate called fog of war. And essentially it's like man-made chaos. So they're trying to get you to experience chaos and think critically under pressure in a training environment. So if in the future you have to you have to act under pressure, you're gonna be, it's gonna be like muscle memory. You're gonna be able to think clearly and uh, make good decisions and act swiftly. So that's why that's why the yelling is there. If you you know if you look at Navy boot camp and Army boot camp and Air Force basic training, you know they yell, but it it, it is not it is not like the Marine Corps. And um, the Marine Corps prides itself on all the intricacies it has of its boot camp and, uh, and how difficult it is. Because it truly is difficult. Now, finally, I want to talk about the haircut. Everybody is going to get a haircut when you go to boot camp. Like, the first thing you do once you step off that bus is get your damn head shaved. And it is, a, it is, a <laughs> it is an experience for sure. Because it, when you get that haircut and you get all that hair shaved off... I mean, you really, truly feel less than a human being. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. What I'm saying is the reason why you get your hair shaved off is because they want to take away your individuality. They want you to be less than nothing so that when they build you back up, you are going to be a Marine. You're going to be, be able to work cohesively with a unit. It's not going to be all me, 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 I, 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 which it seems to be with every young person, including my peers. You know, we're a very self-centered generation. And when you go to boot camp and you get your clothes stripped away and you get your hair taken off and you're in a uniform and you don't look different from, you know, Joe Schmo to the left of you, it, it changes you. It really changes you. So that's the reason why you get the haircut. It's to, it is truly to strip away your individuality and build you back up again. And for the first, you know, uh, for the first month or two months of boot camp, you are, you are less than nothing. You'll, you'll see guys, uh, you'll be walking around, uh, Paris Island or San Diego and you'll be wearing, uh, shoes. You'll be wearing go fasters is what we call them. And essentially they're just, uh, you know, they're like the little new balance shoes. Shout out to new balance. Sponsor me. What up? Um, and it looks goofy. Like you're in your, you're in your regular uniform, but you're wearing shoes and they, and, and we call, and it, it's just, it's a, it's a rite of passage. Why are you, why are they wearing shoes? Because, oh, they're first phase, they're new recruits, you know? 
and and it's another way to make you less than nothing. You'll see other marine, you'll you'll see other recruits walking past you, and they've got their boots bloused. Oh, okay, they got their boots bloused. They must be second phase or whatever. And it's like every time you get through another week or another month of boot camp, and you you get onto the next phase, there's a little bit of something they give you. You know, you can wear boots now. You can blouse your boots now. You can see somebody wearing go fast, which is like, oh, that sucks. So all the things that they do at boot camp serve a purpose. They all serve a purpose. Another thing that you'll find at boot camp is things get repetitive. They go, you do something over and over and over again until it's perfect. It could be something as mundane as tying your shoes. I remember tying my shoes probably, not an exaggeration, maybe 200 times because one kid wasn't tying his, his boots fast enough. And that is what I try to tell people. That is the hardest part about boot camp. That is, it's, it's mental, but not in the way that like it's challenging in, in like a, in like a difficult way. Like it's not like a math problem. It's more like how much bullshit can I put up with before I lose my mind? It doesn't matter if it's, you know, not being able to touch your face, getting that haircut. If you have to tie your shoes 200 times, if you have to clean the floor 400 times, if you have to run and touch a pole 50 times, it is going to get old. You're going to question why you're there. You're going to, it's going to make you wonder what the hell did I sign up for? This is not what I wanted, but trust me, by the time the boot camp is over and you're a Marine, it is going to all make sense. So guys, if this video helped you out, please like, and subscribe, um, Comment below, what do you guys want to learn about here? Uh, did this video help you? Uh, and if you can think of anything that I missed in the video, let me know below in the comment section. Please, please, please follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Clayton Philpo. And if you want to send any mail, if you want to send anything for the stream or donations or anything like that, my P.O. box, my mailbox is in the video description. Uh, the next video we have coming up here is uh, I've got a few letters from Marine Recruits and uh, they're interesting, and there are different phases of boot camp. So I've gotten some mail recently from some Marine recruits, and, and that's going to be a really good video. So, again, please, please, please like and subscribe, share the channel, and we will see you guys next time.